Well, with that, we'll move on. Um, so our last speaker in this session um, is uh, Nick Nifatiev. I oh, know that I can say it correctly, Nick. Come on in from uh, from Moscow, and um, he's going to talk to us a slightly different change of topics. Partly structural immunogenicity of galactomannan, which, of course, those of us interested in fungal disease and asbestosis has been measuring for fifteen or twenty years, but not well. In my case, thought very much about it. He has thought a lot about it. Here he is. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, David, for a kind introduction. After going through these uh, financial disclosures, I would like to join previous speakers in thanking organizers, especially Cornelia, who proposed to me this uh, subject of this uh, talk. Uh, this is a big honor to me to, to, to speak to you on this session because uh, contrary to other participants, I am not mycologist and even I am not immunologist. I am probably only one carbohydrate chemist in this audience. And uh, my laboratory is focused on investigation of carbohydrate molecules which are expressed on the surface of uh, host cells or cells of uh, pathogens. And investigation of structure, synthesis of these molecules gives a lot of utility for development of uh, vaccines, drugs, and diagnostics, therapeutics, antibodies, and we are very, very active in all these directions. So, uh, fungi represent a special interest for us chemists because up to now there are many controversial information about structure of fungal cell wall and particularly the structure of polysaccharides of fungal cell wall. You may, one can see a lot of different cartoons representing the structure of a cell wall of fungi. You see these layers can be parallel, anti-parallel, and different and different. And uh, this always reminds me famous arts by Juan Vero, Chiffre de Constellation Lampes du Femme, which looks very, very similar to the structure of fungal cell wall. To clarify the situation, we started several years ago systematic synthesis of oligosaccharide molecules of different lengths and structure representing essential types of uh, fungal cell wall polysaccharides. And this program includes galactomannan fragments, alpha and beta manan fragments, which are important for candida, alpha and beta glucan fragments, ketin, uh, galactosamina galactans, and uh, some others. So galactomannan represents a special interest because of importance of galactomannan assay for practical mycology. And uh, additional stimulates I, give, I, give from, uh, I got from uh, our health insurance system because uh, several years ago, maybe in 2012, I don't know why Bayer had lost the registration for their galactomannan assay in Russia and it was challenging to develop new one assay. So, Importance of galactomannan test is very well known. It is included in all regulations and recommendations for diagnosis and management of aspergillosis, both in North America and Europe. But in spite of such importance, there are many, many papers which describe and protocol variety of issues derived from the use of galactomannan test. First of all, false negative. Reactivity, you know, it, it can be, sensitivity can be varied from 100 to 53 percent. And what is important, that causes for the variability are not well understood. In addition, there are many, many protocoled false positive uh, results. And their, proxim uh, their amount can vary from 2.5 percent to up to 10% for pediatric patients, and even for 83 for neonates. Well, we know also that the galactomannan test has a lot of cross-reactivity, and this is very surprising with whom. It, is, it has cross-reactivity with bacteria, bifida bacteria, and other gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria, including mycobacterial tuberculosis. And again, explanation and molecular rationale of this cross-reactivity was not understood. Well, that is why we, we had a lot of stimulus, stimulus to start our own galactomannan 
investigation program. And uh, several years ago, when we started, we were informed only about such structure of Galactomanan, which was reported in the famous paper by Jean-Paul with whom we collaborate a lot. So Galactomanan is a brush-like polysaccharide containing this manan backbone, and uh, side chains built up from Galactofuranos units. And uh, in 94, it was reported that there is only one five bond between these Galactofuranos units. Well, we decided to synthesize the library of these compounds and the fragments representing different parts of Galactomanan, and we had to get some rationale from what to start. And uh, we learned from another one paper by Jean Paul Lodge and colleagues that uh, to a antibodies which are used in galactomanan assay, they recognize tetrasaccharide. So that is why we decided to, to select these two pentasaccharides as the first synthetic targets. This tetras uh, pentasaccharides which contain this uh, manan unit at the reducing end and four galactofuranose units built up through 1,5 lecazid bond. Well, this is very elegant molecules, and they, looks very, they look very simple. But nevertheless, synthesis of galactofuranose containing molecules rep represent very big task and uh, not easy. That is why we had to invent our own original chemical method for transformation of uh, piranazite units into galactofuranazite. And uh, this is a very good and new reaction, which was widely used by our laboratory and by some other laboratories now. Well, this is probably second only uh, chemical slide, which shows the principal scheme for assembling of these two pentasaccharides, which was performed in our laboratory. So this scheme was published in 2015, and the same year, Shibata and colleagues published the presence of one six linkage between Galactofuranos units in Galactomanan chains. We were lucky that up to this moment we also investigated structure of Galactomanan and also detected this, this one six bond, and even we discovered another one minor one two bond between Galactofuranos and Manos units. And these two observations dramatically enlarged the synthetic scheme which we performed in laboratory. So this is only part of synthesized molecules, and uh, we continuously work on enlargement of this library. So uh, as you saw, all our oligosaccharides contain spacer group, and uh, this gives us the possibility to introduce different labels and functional moiety on the end of this oligosaccharides, for example, to biotin latest molecules. And the biotin latent ligands are very important and I would say indispensable for generation of glyca arrays. Because it is possible to load quantitatively biotin latent oligosaccharide model, uh, molecules on the surface of uh, streptavidin coated plates. Uh, you probably heard about glyca arrays, and uh, for generation of glyca arrays, different approaches are used. First of all, uh, chemical immobilization is applied and uh, adsorption is applied. But these two methods are dependent from the structure of oligosaccharides. And larger molecules tend to absorb or link in smaller extent as in our case, because in our case, we load quantitatively because the link between streptovidin and biotin is very, very reliable and quantitative. Well, these glyca arrays are very useful instruments for investigation of different processes of uh, recognition. For example, we applied these glyca arrays to investigate how immune cells recognize different distinct oligosaccharidic molecules. For example, we just published uh, screenings, screenings of uh, glyca arrays built up from fragments of uh, galactomanan and investigated their ability to express, to stimulate PBMN, uh, to, stim uh, to express chemokines. Same was used for investigation of uh, expression of cytokines in response to loading of uh, immune cells to the surface of glyca arrays. But uh, 
Like arrays of these types are, can be used for investigation of many other very important immunological questions. First of all, for investigation of carbohydrate specificity of antibodies against, against Galactomana anophospergillus. So, early today morning, we heard uh, from David Denning, uh, uh, David Denning that uh, there is still a challenge for development of new diagnostic approaches and more reliable diagnostics. So we work hard, and uh, I would like to remind you that uh, EBP, EB2A antibody, which is included into Galactaman and SA, which is widely used now, it was claimed that it recognized tetrasaccharidic epitope. So we took this antibody and subjected to screening on glycary, and we observed very, very surprising results. It appeared that it recognized not tetrasaccharide epitope, but it recognized disaccharide epitope as a minimal recognition fragment. So it recognized disaccharide not only in beta 15 chains, but also in the chains which are coupled with beta 16 linkage. And, uh, uh, for example, it recognized also this disaccharide in the longer chains, for example, with altered beta 15 beta 16 linkage. And this very important observation give us possibility to explain false positive signals observed in the case of the use of this diagnostic kit. Because many, many of this bacteria was shown produce polysaccharides which contain such altered beta-1,5, beta-1,6 linkages. For example, all these bifidobacteria, they contain these fragments. And even the polysaccharide of mycobacteria tuberculosis also contain. And this is explanation of possible false positive signals which are observed in the use of uh, these diagnostic kits. And this is possible explanation of the higher amount of false positive uh, cases which are detected for neonates which are fed by their mothers.